Hi, and welcome to the Calculus One Video Tutor. The purpose of this DVD course is to teach you about calculus, obviously. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to work a lot of example problems in each and every section. Before we go into that stuff, I just want to give you uh, my two-minute speech on, on calculus and why it's important. Um, the first thing I really want to say is, first of all, put all of your fears aside. Okay, calculus uh, has this bad reputation as something really hard to understand, something really complicated because, geez, they named it calculus. I mean, calculus just sounds mean, okay? So I want you to take those thoughts, I want you to put them on the back burner because they're not true. I'm going to teach you how to do calculus and it's going to seem like third grade math. That's my goal, okay? My goal is to work every step, step by step by step, and to do enough problems so that you feel comfortable doing them on your own. And the goal is that getting that experience will help you go into your homework and into your tests and uh, do well right off the bat. Now the other thing I wanted to say is that I'm not going to work problems of every type. I'm not going to cover every single topic that you might cover in class. So what you're going to need to be willing to do on your end is to pick up the book and to work additional problems. I promise you I've tutored a lot of people in this subject and in other subjects in math. And really, the way you do it is just like football or hockey or soccer. You have to practice it, okay? So I'll do my part. I will teach you the, the sh I won't say the shortcuts, but the, the, the quick and the straight truth on how to do the problems. I'm not going to have a lot of theory. I'm going to explain what I need to explain to you. Mainly, I'm going to show you how to do it by working examples. So watch the DVD course from beginning to end, and I promise you that if you do that, and if you uh, make sure you understand what I'm talking about before I go on, that we will be in good shape. Um, okay, so let's move into the, the topic of this particular section of the class, the first section, which is um, the concept of a derivative. Okay? Um, there are two main things that you're going to have to learn in Calculus 1, if you have to just boil them down. The first one is called the derivative, and we're going to devote the next several sections to that. And then the second topic really is called an integral. And they have goofy, really scary sounding names. Okay? Um, but instead of just telling you what a derivative is, I want to show you what a derivative is. So let me try to do that. Let's say this, this pen here okay, is moving along at a constant speed like this. It's not speeding up, you know, it's not slowing down, it's just marching across your field of view like this at a constant speed. Okay? So if it were doing this, okay, and, and if you were in your car and it were going along like this, then you would say it would be going at like, I don't know, 10 miles an hour constantly. The needle's at 10 miles an hour. Okay? So it goes across constant like this. So if we were to plot the position, the position of, of this pen as a function of time, what would it look like? If we did that, we would have a graph like this, and this would be time, and this would be uh, position. I'm going to say POS for position. Okay, and then along this axis, you would have little tick marks for time: one second, two second, three seconds, four seconds, so on. And then on this axis, you would have, you know your distance is going along your field of view at a constant rate, what would this graph look like? I think you'll, you could convince yourself that this graph is going to look like a straight line. Because each unit of time that I go forward, it goes, it goes forward in position. Every time I go one second, it goes up the same amount in uh, position. So as I go forward in time, it goes forward in position by the same increment. Each time I go one second, it goes up a certain amount each and every time. Okay? Something that, that would accelerate, if I were to accelerate this in front of you, then it, it might look something like this, because as I go forward in time, it might just scoot on by faster than you can really keep up with it. But that's not what I'm really after here. So this is called um, the graph of, of this pen as it goes across your field of view at a, constant, at a constant velocity. So then if you were to write this as an equation, you might have the position as a function of time would equal, and I'm just going to say in words here, a straight line. Okay, obviously a straight line. Um, okay, and in and, and equation terms, uh, that's just uh, m, which would be the slope of the line, times time. If you go back and remember from your algebra, the formula for a line in the uh, most basic sense is just some slope times a time. Uh, and it goes through the origin here, so there's no there's no y intercept, the y intercept is 0, so it's just p is equal to mt, where m is just a slope. It's a number, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's just a slope. Okay? Now, if I asked you the question, okay, 
that, this is a graph of the position of this as a function of time as it goes across your field of view. Then, how could you plot the velocity, or the speed is another way to say this, of this pin that goes across your field of view? How would you do that? Well, I already told you, and when I set this up to, to kind of explain this to you, that this pin is moving along your field of view at a constant speed. I already told you that, so it's kind of, I kind of already gave you the answer. Um, the answer is, well, it's moving across your field of view at a constant speed, and so if it's moving across your field of view at a constant speed, the velocity must be a constant. In other words, as I march forward in time, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, as I march forward in time, the velocity does not change. It's constant. It's constant, in this case, at you know, three meters per second or something like this, or, or whatever speed you want to represent. If it's, if it's going faster, well, then the line will be up here. And if it's going slower, well, then the line will be down here. But in this case, I just picked, I just picked a number. Finally, we're going to draw one more quick graph here. As a function of time, what is the acceleration of this pin that goes across your field of view? Well, I think you can convince yourself that since it's going across your field of view at a constant velocity, I've kind of, again, also already told you implicitly it's not accelerating. Acceleration is when you speed up or you slow down. But when you go straight across at a constant velocity, the acceleration is zero. So the acceleration as a function of time is going to be right here at zero. And it's going to be hard to see with all this black ink everywhere, but it's right here along the axis. All right, so you have a pin that goes across your field of view at a constant velocity. Its position is going forward at a constant rate per unit time. Its velocity is a constant because it's not speeding up or slowing down. And again, because it's not speeding up or slowing down, its acceleration is a flat zero because this is zero down here. And if we had to write this as a function, we would say the acceleration as a function of time equals, can you guess what? The big fat zero because there is no acceleration for this problem that I'm giving you here. All right, now, you will be surprised, probably, if I tell you that we just took two derivatives on the board in um, not an equation form or not you know, rigorously with a bunch of equations, but we've done, we, I have already explained to you what derivative was, I just didn't tell you it was a derivative, okay? Big picture is, and you're going to have to remember this, but it's not going to be hard to remember. The derivative of something is just the slope of it, okay? Or you could say, and the calculus books like to say, it's the rate of change, okay? So if you look at this graph here, okay, the position graph, um, when you take the derivative of the position, you get the velocity. When you take the derivative of the velocity, you get the acceleration. So these are two derivatives. We've taken a derivative here and we then arrived at this. So the velocity is the derivative of the position. And when you take the derivative of the velocity, you get the acceleration. So all this derivative business, what does it really mean? I'll say it one more time. The derivative is the slope of your curve. Okay? 